Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video. We are doing a live for the best work from home tips for virtual assistants in 2021. Now, this week I've got eight simple, very simple but very effective, effective tips that I've learned while working from home. It's gonna help you maximize your efficiency. So we're gonna talk about things that will help you prevent burnout, live a more balanced life, AKA how to actually have a happy work-life balance and how to avoid shiny new object syndrome, AKA major distractions. So first of all, we're gonna create a schedule that you love. Now you might work a typical schedule of nine to five or as a VA and business owner, you might consider setting whatever hours you like the most. So if you're the most creative in the afternoon, perhaps then you dedicate your client related work to after lunch. So it's definitely a great idea to help segment your day around your ideal life. So if you enjoy doing back of house or back of office tasks like updating your invoices, checking your emails, updating your marketing materials in the morning, then don't save it for the end of the day. Start your day by doing the things that you love because this is gonna help you look forward to your work even more and feel even more empowered as a business owner. And for sure, it's not enough to set your work hours. You also have to maintain them as well because boundary setting is a huge part of work from home productivity. Once you start stretching your boundaries, I guarantee you're going to end up working 12 hour days. Like you'll blink and you'll be like, damn, I worked 18 hours all day long and I'm burned out at the end of the week. So avoid the temptation of doing quick tasks, quick things like checking your email because it will only take a minute or answering this phone call because it will just take a second. And lastly, I want you to think about scheduling in some sort of fle uh, flexibility into your schedule as well, because not only does life usually get in the way of plans, but client tasks might take you longer than you've anticipated. So my rule of thumb for maintaining a schedule is to add buffer time to every task. That way, if you do go over your anticipated time frame, the rest of your day hasn't totally been derailed. Turn off notifications. This is a huge one. Now, studies have shown that push notifications absolutely derail your productivity. Every time you get an email ding, a text message, an app notification, you are more likely to botch what you're working on and lose your concentration. So email is especially one of these big time sucks. And so to minimize distractions, it's an easy recommendation, turn them off. Uh, this is especially handy for turning off email notifications. Now we as VAs uh, very likely get emails all day long. In fact, the average person gets about 120 emails a day. So good rule of thumb here to turn off the email notifications and try to check your inboxes about three times a day. First thing in the morning, you can see the kind of tasks that have come in overnight around lunchtime to see if any clients need anything midday and then uh, before you close up shop at the end of the day too. Tip number three, use your calendar to keep track of all your regular and home life items. This is a total game changer. Now, humans tend to overestimate how much we can actually get done in a day, which is personally why I find to-do lists to be completely pointless because my to-do list grows and I get very little done. So by inputting all of your details into your calendar, you'll actually have this 10,000 foot bird's eye view of projects, to-dos, your personal tasks, and having and sticking to the schedule will also help you avoid that shiny new object syndrome that I mentioned earlier. So the shiny new object syndrome, tell me if this has happened to you before in the comments, you're working on a client task or a project that you're pretty passionate about, then you start to feel tired mid project or you're getting fatigued and you think, you know what, I'll just jump onto this new thing that looks way more exciting or I'll, I'll just schedule my, my social media for the week because that'll be way more fun. And what ends up happening is that you have a ton of distractions. You don't get any projects done whatsoever. The shiny new object syndrome is definitely a real thing that happens when you work from home. But again, by setting everything that you're doing in your calendar minute to minute, it'll help ensure that you're actually sticking to your schedule that you've set for yourself. Number four, take breaks. So generally, we as people are most productive for about an hour at a time, and anything beyond that um, is kind of a brain drain. So break up your workday into hour blocks, if you can, on your calendar, or 
at the simplest version of it, have some sort of a timer on your phone or an app that interrupts you every hour. So once you've got that hour alert, I want you to hop up, I want you to stretch, grab a drink of water, do some stretches, get your blood flowing, go outside, get some sunshine, throw in a load of laundry. Uh, I don't even care if you take a 10 minute break playing Candy Crush. The point is, give your eyeballs a break, get some distance, blink a few times, get your blood moving. Just the very fact that you can take five to 10 minutes to yourself will have a huge impact on your day and your overall level of fatigue. Tip number five, change up your environment. Now our environment plays a huge impact on us and we often don't even realize it. We often think that change comes from within and that we believe that achieving goals is actually about changing ourselves and the way we think. But you can actually be a lot more productive by making small changes in your environment. Changes like minimizing your distractions in your home office. Uh, if you're working from home for the first time, you can even create a makeshift home office. Even placing a desk on top of a small carpeted area can signal to your brain that you're in work mode or office mode. And since we're still mid pandemic, you're probably likely not going to a coffee shop anytime soon. So these small at home changes can make a big difference in your daytime productivity. Tip number six, make a work playlist. Now, music does a lot to motivate you while you're working. So if you have songs that pep you up and get you motivated, put them on your playlist. Now, having said that, there are studies that actually show that people who listen to music throughout the day experience less anxiety and lower cortisol levels than those who don't. But not all music is created equal because music with lyrics tend to distract us as does unfamiliar music. So when you are building your playlist, look for something that's like ambient or classical. The fewer lyrics, the better. Just something that doesn't distract you, but rather helps your productivity. Tip number seven, automate. All of those three minute tasks that you do and repeat throughout the day take a toll on your productivity. And honestly, it's 2021. We have no excuse not to automate repetitive tasks. There are free tools like Calendly that let others schedule meetings or, or calls with you based on your availability. There's no back and forth emails required. You can automate your social media posts using Buffer, Hootsuite, uh, Hootsuite. Even Canva Pro nowadays lets you schedule right from Canva itself. You can edit your emails in real time using Grammarly. You can create rules in your inbox that segment emails based on keywords or segment them based on which client uh, you're working on right now. You can even automate your vo invoices using Harvest. You can even turn your emails into tasks using Asana. So the point is you can avoid decision fatigue by setting up time to create those systems now to help keep your business rolling throughout the day. And number eight, this is one of my favorite tips, but it is to create a disconnect routine. And when you work from home and when you work on your own, it's really easy to work a ton of hours and blow past that typical 40 hour work week. And when you start constantly thinking about work that needs to be done, your life quickly turns into that hamster wheel burnout territory because your mind is always set on work. So to mentally disconnect from your work, you can set boundaries and stick to them like glue. So earlier in this video, we talked about how important boundary setting is, uh, but more so than that, create some after hours rituals. Now rituals are really powerful because they're typically things that you'll look forward to. So it could be that at the end of every day, you go on a walk around your neighborhood. Uh, just do something that's unrelated to your work to give yourself a break. And relatedly, my personal favorite tip is to pretend that you have a commute to help you decompress. So a typical commute time, if you used to work in an office and you had a typical commute for 20 to 30 minutes, then actually schedule into your calendar and set aside 30 minutes where you can just decompress. Because having that time in the car by yourself to listen to music, to replay things that went on through the day, to replay emails and tasks, that helps you get everything out of your brain before you get home. There's really no excuse why we can't do that if we're working from home too. So if it takes you 30 minutes, put on music, do some stretching, take a stroll. Do something that stands in for your commute time so that when you do get home, you're ready to enjoy your family, your friends, your alone time, some cookie time, <laughs> cookie, cooking time, whatever it is that lights a fire. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a real quick one this week about the eight tips to help you maximize your efficiency while working from home as a VA. If any of these tips resonated with you, leave me a comment. Or if I've missed anything that you're really into that have totally helped change your productivity or your work from home routine, let me know because I'm always looking for new things to add to my own. Thank you guys. I will catch you on the next video. And uh, as always, if you have any questions about VA work, virtual assistant stuff, uh, check out my website, erinbooths.com or leave me a comment here. I'm always happy to chat with other VAs. Thanks guys.